Okay, this is Paul Schmaltz in his workroom, and he's going to tell you what he's getting ready to do here in making, uh, getting ready to make some GANs. <clears throat> okay, I'm setting up the process here to make some copper GANs. And uh, <clears throat> to do that, I have to use copper, which you see here in my hand. So it's a roll of foil. And I also have to use copper that has been nano coated, which you see sitting right here in this in this bucket on these hangers getting ready to wire into this plain piece of copper. Do you want to tell them how long that nano-coated copper has been in process? <laughs> this nano-coated copper, uh, I run through a process of steam cauterization about a year and a half ago and uh, then I hung it outside. It's been hanging outside for about a year and a couple of months. And, it, and the longer it hangs out there, the longer the layers, or the deeper the layers of carbon on the plate become. And that carbon covering on that plate is tiny, tiny particles that are spaced in such a way that they conduct the plasmatic energy of whatever is on this other plate here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be copper. I've got, I'll, I'll show it here. I've got one rigged up up here. And I'm getting ready to start. And this is to make zinc GANs. You can see the zinc plate in here. And then here's the other nano-coated copper plate. And this is an LED light that puts resistance between the two, two plates so the current doesn't flow too fast and your particles are too big. So what this LED light does is it establishes a resistance and the current doesn't flow near as fast through the salt solution that's in here and your GANS forms much slower but it's a finer quality. It's a smaller particle and a, a better to use for plasma. And on those uh, nano coated copper plates how many layers of the nano coating would you say there might be? They claim there's 50,000 layers. And you can see the same type of setup here. I'm getting ready to make some CH3. And it's the same type of setup except I've got some zinc coated chicken wire in the bottom. I'll turn that all wadded up along with the copper plate and the the uh, zinc eventually will be eroded off of the chicken wire and at that point we'll get a little iron flow in there which will give us the carbon and we'll get the carbon out of the air also and the hydrogen out of the air to make CH3, 
which is a rudimentary sugar that provides energy to our GANS mixtures. So that's what we have here. I've got these three setups that uh, we're getting ready to start in the next day or two. And with the, uh, without the LED light creating some resistance, would you end up with something that would be more like a colloidal pro product instead of a, a plasma product? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you would end up with more of a colloid than, than what we get. Uh, it, it's just like making colloidal silver, you, you end up with much larger particles than you do with plasmatic silver. And uh, plasmatic silver has a much more active field than colloidal silver. Can you show us a few of the things, the end products that you have on the shelf here that are the CH3 and the copper and the zinc uh, that you did some time ago? This is CH3 right here. You can see the layer of GANs in the bottom. Okay. And this is amino acid hemoglobin. You can see the hemoglobin in the bottom. Uh, this one is magnesium, and you can see the you see the white powder in there. See how fine that is? Does that powder ever dissolve? No, it doesn't dissolve. It stays in suspension. And what does the copper look like? Uh, I got some over here. I'll get it. This is the copper, and you can see it's a green, blue-green color, and it's a very fine GANS. It's just like real fine face powder. <laughs> 